Good. Okay. Well, good morning, everybody. And I'll go ahead and start. Uh, good morning, everybody. And uh, thank you for uh, participating this morning. Uh, my name is Brian Jones. I am over the Office of Grants Administration. Um, and today, uh, Kim Zware will be uh, running the, the presentation. Um, Yolanda Mitchell Garns, um, I'll introduce she, she's over the uh, her, that section. And uh, we also have some help with um, Kim Palmer. Uh, she'll be monitoring and see if there's any questions. Um, but today, this is going to be um, mainly about the, uh, the, the coronavirus relief fund, yes. But today, we want to cover um, just the operational side of getting you guys all set up um, to be able to receive the grant. Um, you know, making sure you're tied into the state's accounting system, getting the proper roles, um, introducing you to the, the e-grant system that the state of Ohio, the Department of Education runs, which is called CCIP. Um, and, and, and it all may seem daunting right now, uh, but I guarantee that once you, once you get kind of situated and set up in this process and you're established in CCIP, it is super smooth um, and there's no worries. Um, so... Uh, with this grant, is uh, it, it's the main CRF grant, so we'll get you access to that through CCIP. But um, in, the in the next week or so, you'll have available to you um, a broadband connect connectivity grant, uh, which will also go through the CCIP that you apply for. Um, and so, so um, in both of those, are, will run exactly the same through the CCIP. Um, yeah. Uh, if there's anything else, I'm going to go turn it over to Kim. Um, it's all yours, Kim. Great. Good morning, everyone. OK, bear with me. Um, we're going to go through uh, uh, the quick reference guide that was sent with your notification on Friday. Uh, there was the grant guidance and there was a quick quick reference link. Um, if you have the, the guidance open, great. If you have the CCIP or your your online, that's good too. Um, I'll try to be mindful of your time. Please feel free to stop me after each section to ask a question. Just turn on your microphone and we'll try to troubleshoot as we go through um, the presentation. So let's move right into the the systems that you're going to need to collect funds. Uh, every grantee that receives money from the Ohio Department of Education, or for that matter, from the state of Ohio, has to have certain items. Um, the very first thing you're going to need is an OHID account and a Department of Education profile. The OHID, and I'm in section 1.2, I hope you all can see my screen. I'm in section 1.2 of the Grants Management Guidance. Quick reference guide. The OHID account is a statewide account. This account, once you have it, you're going to be able to access any system in the state of Ohio state of Ohio after you request access. Uh, just because you have the ID doesn't mean you have fair game to get into all the systems. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to click on the first link uh, to kind of give you an idea of what you're looking at. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the OHID portal sign on and bear with me. I've got a few screens, so I may have to I'll try not to make you dizzy as I move things around. Uh, the, when you click on the first link, it will take you to the OHID portal sign in. This is the screen similar to what you may see. Uh, you're not an ODE employee. I'm not sure if you'll see the side uh, that talks about the department employee. This is the section you're going to be worried about. If you do not have an OHID portal, what you're going to do is you're going to click on the link provided. It, you'll see the the uh, the login pre populated my information. Down at the bottom underneath login, you'll see an area that says create an OHID account. That's where you're going to click. I do want to mention here before we go any further that the state of Ohio within the last week changed the design of the OHID logon. 
some of the screens that some of the uh, the instructions, the help, the help instructions that you see, the screens may look a little different, but all the information is there. So you're going to go ahead and click on OHID if you don't have an account or put in your login information. After you click on OHID, it will take you to a portal. You'll just fill in all the information that is requested uh, to create your account. Pretty straightforward. Now what happens if you get in into the process and you get stuck, what you're going to do is click the need help button right below the OHID portal. This will take you to a page that the Ohio Department of Education has on their website. You can see the the uh, the Department of Education is in the web browser and this will walk you through a lot of different different steps. Of course, if you, you you still are stuck, feel free to call the 877 number uh, shown at the top in the gray text box or click on profile help. We also you'll also find from this section a link for the department's portal FAQ web page. I'm just going to walk through a little bit, uh, not a lot. Uh, it, 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 there's a section that explains what the ID is. There's also a section that gives you three options. There may be a, the, the, you may have an existing OHID account, but you need to uh, you need to tie it to the Department of Education's web pay, uh, system you can you can click the button here and we haven't talked about that so I don't want to I don't want to get ahead of us uh, if you don't have if you have an, an an education profile but you don't have an ID account you can click on number two number three which maybe a lot of you are in that situation you'll go ahead and click on create both profiles that'll give you uh, jump you to the section and give you a video on how to how to do that um, this this page is pretty resourceful. Uh, feel free to to navigate to that. Um, at any time in the information we sent you to notify you of this meeting, we provided contact information for Kimberly Palmer. Kimberly Palmer is also on this call. She has a, a cell phone. She has an email and you also you may see her call you through teams. So if you if you hear an odd ringing, uh, it may be your teams. Uh, it may be a teams application or it may call directly to your cell phone. Um, OK, that that's pretty straightforward. Uh, again, if you're if you are in the OHID portal and want to access the department's uh, instructions, you'll click the second link um, and it's going to take you to a job aid. Uh, this is another resource we provided. Uh, some of this information is going to start to look familiar. Um, you're creating an account. You'll see the screen looks a little different. Uh, this is what I had mentioned a little bit earlier. Uh, You'll have that tool um, and bear with me. I don't want to keep. Then for additional help you can. We've provided the link to take you right to the page I showed you uh, earlier. The next item so while you're while you're in this area, make sure that you create both the OHID and the Department of Education profile. We need to recognize you uh, not only at again the state of Ohio, but at the Department of Education. So make sure you have both. The next item that you're going to need for your organization is an OAKS ID number. An OAKS ID number is the number used to to, to send payments to you. It's a state of Ohio number assigned to your organization. 
that's what you're going to need to do business with the state of Ohio. If you already have this, that's OK. Go ahead and skip creating a new one. If you're not sure whether you have an Oaks ID, uh, you can you can use the contact us and, and the phone number provided. But let's kind of let's click on the the link provided. It's going to take you to a supplier portal. Again, the Oaks, the OHID account is you're going to see that in just about every system we we access. If you do not have an account, create a new account. Click on the button right here. Click continue. You've probably already already done that. So at that point, you're going to be able to log in. You've already if you already have your OHID account. Log in. And you'll choose one of the three options. If you already are a supplier, you may need to use uh, this link. If you're a brand new, you'll start a registration. You're going to walk through each of the items. You're going to need banking account information. Uh, you'll need a W-9. Uh, you'll want to remember for a few, for, the, for the next item I'm going to talk about, you're going to want to remember the address, and this is the address that you want to use for all your financial matters. It's not going to be um, uh, whichever one you want to use. If if you have a PO box for for financial matters, make sure. And I'm not sure, I, and I'm not 100 sure, but if your PO box is allowed, but you just want to make sure that you remember which address you put you put in this system. The reason that is important is for the next step, 1.31. Now that you have an Oaks ID number, which is going to take about five days to process, uh, once you have an Oaks ID number, you need to link the state of Ohio number to your Department of Education's assigned number. The assigned number that the department gives you is what we call an IRN. It's an information retrieval number. It's a six digit number that is, if, you, if you're familiar with it, is um, usually starts with a zero. Uh, you'll need to link the two together. So you've told the state of Ohio your information. Now the Department of Education needs to tie your IRN to that information. So when the payments go out, we, we do what you want us to do. If you want us to do electronic transfer, it's all going to hook together. So if you just click on the link, we provided an email. Uh, a pre-populated email. Let me bring it to this screen. All that you'll need to do is enter your organization name, your organization ID. We're asking for the address for fiscal matters, and this is the address that we just talked about for Oaks. You'll want to enter your supplier ID, and that's going to be the number that your Oaks number. You're not going to be able to complete this step until you get that. Hit send, and Brenda or FIS, the fiscal management team at the Department of Education will make sure the the Oaks ID and your IRN are linked together. Can I interrupt? For a quick Absolutely. Um, I am an auxiliary assistant at a Catholic school in Ohio, and I'm wondering if maybe this is not my place to be. Is this something that my principal should be doing, or because this none of this sounds very familiar to me? Um, okay. Or is this something that the board office should be doing that in the district that we live in or that we work in? If you receive the, we can check. Actually, Kim Palmer could check, or we can check to see what is. Do you, what is the name of your organization? St. Clement School in Loveland, Ohio. We're part of the Loveland School District. Okay, we can double check to see if your district received funding. Um, 
so let me I'll interject. So um, if you want to sit on, so so if you want to sit in, that's fine. Um, from we don't because we don't know um, like all the all the non publics have different levels or of authorities, right? We're used to superintendent treasurer. Um, so the the list that we got um, to send out came from our non public office. So it's fine that you know if you if you if you're thinking oh this isn't me maybe it should be our principal or whoever. It's and that's fine. It's if if you want to pass the the message on to whoever in your whoever in your district or your school, I'm sorry, in your school that would have the have the ultimate authority to accept the grant. Let's put it that way. Okay. So if I it's just, not I you, money, but I, I don't, I'm not familiar with the IP, and I and I feel like maybe I'm wasting not I don't want to waste your time or my you know what I mean. I, yeah. Just okay, if well, you this, would though. If I find out, like, because I know you guys are recording, it will just be available later if I find out the right means to access it all? Yes. Yes. Okay. We will post that in the, I plan to post the recording in this chat room, uh, and you can always go back and access it. Okay, and if you're the only one, <laughs> if you're the only one in your school that's received this message, though, would you pass it on to that, that you know, whoever's above you, that kind of thing? Because we want to make sure that yeah, you guys get these funds. Perfect. Yeah, Perfect. my principal my principal gave it to me, so I'll give it back to her. All right. Thank you guys. I'm so sorry to take the time. <laughs> no, no, no worries. No. Thanks for asking. Good question. All right. Have a good day. Bye bye. Um, pardon me. I, I have a question also. Um, I'm a new interim principal. Our principal just resigned a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I have a question about the Oaks number. Is that by school or by individual? It's by what you mean individual as a person, as you yes. personally, it would be the, yes. it would be your organization, your school. OK, so yeah. if I were to find out if there were one already assigned to us, I would need to look for it by our school name. Yes. OK, yes. thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Any other questions before we move on? Yeah, um, I have a question. Um, can you hear me OK? Absolutely. OK. Um, I um, am dean of students at um, at our district, and um, my my question would be: Do we uh, we have an elementary a building and a junior high and high school building? Uh, we have been set up as two separate IRNs. So can can I link both IRNs to one one profile, or do I need to create two profiles, one for each IRN? At the Department of Education, it's it's one yeah one Oaks ID can be linked to more than one profile. Yes, at the department. Okay, all right. Thank you. Are, are, are you refer are you referring to the email to the fiscal office? The uh, the email about the award or the grant. You right when when we want to link your Oaks ID, you can link your Oaks ID to multiple IRNs. Yes. Okay, because we only received the email for the elementary building, so I'm I'm wondering if, um, if we ever had this process set up for our junior high and high school. So, um, I may need to just link the additional IRN. So. Yeah, typically, typically the IRN is at the high level. Uh, unless you have separate schools, I know with non-public it may be different. Uh, for example, if if a, if a school district, if a school, the diocese, maybe a Catholic diocese has has maybe for some reason they have a number, an IRN, I don't know. And then each individual school under the diocese would have its own number. Um, yeah, we're a, a Troy Christian schools um, in, in Troy and. So we have the elementary, uh, which existed before the junior high and high school, that has an IRN. And and when we established the junior high high school, they gave us a separate IRN. It's like our school buses. We have to register our school buses twice as two separate districts. Mm -hmm. Brian, can you weigh in on that at all? Do you have two big questions? So in the allocation, do we see the allocations? For how many allocations did your district receive? One or two or three? 
meaning like uh, one for each building. We, I received this notification, uh, or my superintendent did for the elementary. Okay. So received anything for the junior high high school, but I would assume that that there would be something under that under that IRN as well. Um. So the allocation was created by um another office with all with all the data. So I don't know if that allocation that you received is for all three. Um. I'll have to check. But I, I would keep, I don't know if I would, let, let me check to see what that allocation. If can, I, can I add in, we're another Catholic school with two IRN numbers because we have an early learning center and another one. And we did not get the email for the other one. And I just emailed the name on there and they sent us one. We got one for each campus with both IRN numbers. Right. But I had, I had to ask for the second one. So you might have to contact the board of education and ask them to send you the second one. Okay. All right. In your in your organization. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yes. That that yeah. happens very so often. We have two IRNs, so two may need to contact the people that sent it out and ask them, and they'll just resend it to you. Okay. okay. That's helpful. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? I can show you, I'll show you a little bit later where you, where you can enter your IRN into what we call the CCIP, which is the grants management system that we use to see if that particular IRN received an allocation. I can show you that in, in, a, in a minute also. So we got our OHID, our department profile, and OAKS ID, and we're tying our OAKS ID to our IRN. Excuse me. Uh, yes. Um, the link to request the department's fiscal office to link the two numbers is not a live link. On the communication that you got? Yeah, where it okay. says 1.3.1 link Oaks and IRN numbers, it, okay. it just goes to a blank page. Okay, okay. It works on my side, so let me work on, thanks for letting me know that. I will uh, certainly check on that and we will make sure we get that link out to you. Thank you for letting me know. Any other any other questions? Okay. Now we're at 1.4. We need to request access to OEDS. This is this is another really important step. Uh, OEDS is the Ohio Education Directory system. System it stores information unique to your organization at the department level. We're going to click on the first link and you'll see the theme going here. It's going to ask you to log into your OHID portal. We talked about the Department of Education profile. There's now there's also Department of Education applications within your profile. Once you log in to your OHID account. You're going to be taken to a page that looks similar to this. It'll probably plop you. You'll see a dashboard across the top. Uh, you see the dashboard, the sites and applications, uh, a, little, a lot of different information. Mine may look a little different than yours because I am logged in as a, as a state employee. What you're going to look for, we're looking for the OEDS, the Ohio Education Directory tile that's going to look similar to to this the tile that I'm that I have up. So what happens? I'm looking at my sites and applications. I see the CCIP. I see another application, compliance, education, licensure. If you don't see OEDS, use this blue arrow right here to keep scrolling. You're going to look for that the OEDS directory 
in your sites and applications. If you get all the way to the end and you still don't see it, scroll down. Oh, here we go. OK. You'll want to scroll down to the next section. For other applications. You should find the application in this section. You'll want to click on it and follow the directions. It may it may ask it may take a minute. You you're requesting access. It may take a minute, but go ahead and click on that to request access to that application. Incidentally, the Department of Education profile we talked about earlier is in this section also. Uh, you'll want to click on that to, for your profile. One other thing you can do is if you want to save the application to your dashboard, click on the, the star, it'll turn yellow. Each time you come in, you don't have to search for the application. You'll see that it was moved to your dashboard. That's all you, you you're just you just need access to the OEDS directory. Why do you need access? You need access to assign roles in OEDS. The roles that we're talking about here are roles needed in your grant application to be able to do to be able to do a budget, to be able to request money, to be able to do a, 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 a final expenditure report. There are several, there are two role, two mandatory roles that you have to have in OEDS. They are superintendent and or CCIP authorized representative. Those two, those two roles are synonymous. That's the first role you have to have. The second role your organization has to have is treasurer or CCIP fiscal representative. Again, those two in our world are synonymous. If I, How, may, if, I, if I may interrupt here, I'm from the Diocese of Cleveland. I am the OEDS administrator for the diocese. If a school belongs to a diocese, you should have an OEDS administrator that does all this for your schools. Yep, That's absolutely, it. yep. So you don't have to become the administrator if you are a Catholic school standing alone. Your OEDS administrator is within your diocesan office. Thank you for bringing that up. The first link, I'm not going to click on it. You've seen it. It's the OHID user account number and na your name and password. The second link, if you if you do need to create a these roles and you don't have the higher level like a diocese that was just mentioned, we do have a presentation you can view. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but click on the link and there is a, a uh, presentation that will walk you through. How to create. The roles. The last link, if you're not sure who your OEDS administrator is, or if you have one, of course, reach up to your diocese if that's your if that's your structure or there is a higher level, or you could click on the third link. The third link provides a uh, a link to a page that will tell you who to reach out to find out if you have an OEDS administrator. Non-public districts are number two org type. Just click on the link provided and you will be able to to reach out and find out if you have an OEDS administrator. They can help you walk through setting up uh, uh, an OEDS administrator if you need to. If someone's left, that happens. Maybe you had one at some point and that person is long gone on the beach, retired. Uh, they can help you with that also. At any time, if you have any questions, please reach out to our office, grants management at education.ohio.gov, or reach out to Kim Palmer. Uh, she can help steer you in the right direction also. So now you have your roles in OEDS. Now we need the CCIP, which is the system that we use to request money, put the budget in, uh, uh, and do final expenditure reports. Again, the first link is going to take you to the OHID username and password account. We have a presentation. 
under that section that really kind of summarizes a lot of the information we've already talked about and some of the some of the systems that you need to be able to get to the CCIP. Once you have access to the CCIP, you're going to need that little the, the CCIP tile similar. You'll see that in the video similar to the OEDS tile that I shared with you earlier. The next three steps uh, are a federal requirement. The money you received is federal money. There is a a federal transparency act. Uh, you might hear the word FAFADA um, or not, uh, not being in the recipient of federal grants. The Federal Transparency Act required all entities that, that receive federal money to register for a data universal number. It's called a DUNS number. Uh, this is 1.7. The DUNS number is a unique number that's assigned to every organization. The currently the the Dunn's numbers are assigned by a company named uh, called Dunn and Bradstreet. I want to say right here, right now, you receive federal money. You may start receiving emails from the people sitting behind a computer that want to charge you five hundred dollars or more to do this. Do not pay them any money. This process is 100% absolutely free. The federal government is not charging you to do this. Uh, if there's anything you take out, it's free. Um, so if you have somebody that sits in a, in a county next to you that says, what's this data universal number? They want $500. Remember, I told you it's free and please share that with them also. What you're going to do is you're going to click on this, the link. Uh, provided, it's going to take you to a grants.gov website. Very self-explanatory. You're, you're going to walk through this process. Now, if we have a, a diocese situation or another type of um, uh, situation uh, where you have parent-child relationships, you can tie all the organizations together so you only need one Dunn's number, but you're going to have to work with Dunn and Bradstreet to get that done. So if you have the diocese, and I hate to keep using that as an example, uh, and you have 15 or 20 or hundreds of schools underneath you, you can tie them all together if that works for your situation. But what you're going to want to do is talk with Dunn and Bradstreet to have that done. Uh, there's a lot of information that goes into getting a DUNS number, and I know if you can tie them together, you don't want to do it for hundreds of schools. They're going to ask for some very specific information. Um, be mindful when you do this that these systems that I'm talking about bounce off the U.S. Postal Service bounces off IRS records. So everything that you put in here, just as we as we go through, be mindful of that. Uh, otherwise, you, you're going to you're going to receive errors. That's step one. Step two is going to be uh, once you receive your DUNS number, that happens pretty quickly. You need to register your DUNS number in the system of award management, which is SAM. Uh, we, SAM is another free process. You don't want to pay anyone to do this for you. Uh, it is free. When you click the, the, the link provided, it will take you to a page that we just, similar page that we just saw. It's going to be step two. At the bottom, you would have the, the chance to, to click uh, step two. You'll want to complete your registration. Again, Kim Palmer is our contact for the DUNS in the agency. If you have, if you start running into some trouble here, give Kim a call. She'll do the best she can to walk you through this. This is a federal process. Uh, we only have so much information and able to assist. It will take some time. It can be frustrating. Uh, we do understand. Um, but this is a, a federal requirement 
uh, for recipients that receive federal money. Step three, you will you will see this on your screen, but you do not have to go to step three. Step three is going to be for organizations. If you would write a write a uh, a proposal to straight strictly to the federal government and you want to um, and you and you receive money that way. So for this process, you only need to do steps one and two. You'll see in our instructions, we don't ask you to do step three. You're going to get a DUNS number. You're going to register in SAM. And the third item, once again, we have the Ohio Education Directory. We're going to ask you to enter your DUNS number in OEDS, the Ohio Education Directory. The person that's going to have access to do that, we mentioned earlier, is the OEDS administrator. You can click on the link we provided. Again, this information um, is, is used universally. Uh, we have instructions on getting a DUNS number. Uh, we, we linked you directly to the source to try to make it easier uh, for you. We have step two, registering in STAM. We just have some instructions uh, in our own document. What you're going to look at is step three, entering your number in OEDS. And it'll walk you through how to do how to do that. Your OEDS administrator again should be pretty familiar with that. OK. Section one is big. Any questions um, before we go to the next? <laughs> yeah, can, I'm sorry. Good morning. How are you this morning? Good morning. Great. How are you? Fantastic. Um, this is Chris Schisler. I'm calling from the Archdiocese of Cincinnati, and you may have already addressed this question. This is pretty simple. I have some pretty sharp principles down this way who um, are in the early childhood world and have already done some of this. Uh, just as a reminder, at what point, if you've already have a, a registered uh, preschool, what at what point are you going to jump in on this process? Or what steps are you have you already completed? Um, this is new for me. What steps have you already completed if you've already created an early childhood program? Is there any parts of these steps that are already completed for you? If the early childhood program receives federal money and the application goes through the CCIP, there there are some steps that you that you've already completed. Um, I'm guessing you may already have or they may already have an OHID account because you're going to need that to get into the CCIP, which is our grant accounting system. They would have already had the profile. Um, you would have already had an OAKS ID number because that's going to be the number used to get the money. Uh, Perfect. That's very helpful. I, I, they, they know that they've probably already skipped some of these steps because they've already gone through this. I'm just trying to give give some feedback and help them as we got this. I really appreciate it. You've done a very nice job of laying this out. The um, document that you sent is very clear, so I do appreciate your time, and I'll let you keep going. Thank you very oh, much. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime, reach out to us, and we can certainly can certainly step in. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Section two is going to be the easiest section. I'm just going to show it to you and show you that it's there. It's the grants manual. It's a manual that took a lot of years of work uh, to put together. It's a very detailed. It has more information in it than you need, but we wanted to provide it in case you get stuck and you're just that one person that has to read it all from front to back. Um, whether you need it or not, we provided a link there for you. We will reference certain sections of the manual in the next section of this document, but wanted to give you access and, and share with you that it is there. Again, we have our contact information. Section three is how to submit a budget. Uh, unfortunately, you had to go through all the steps in section one to get to, to this point. Uh, submitting a budget in the CCIP is something that is outlined in the grants manual on page nine through ten. We've also provided a quick link for you to be able to submit a budget uh, uh, steps on how to how to submit the budget you're going to see the ohid portal again uh, we're going to tell you where to find the application once you get in the ccip and some of the nuances that you'll see to be able to uh, 
to navigate through uh, how to change the statuses, uh, which sounds pretty foreign right now. Um, once you get to the budget page, you're going to see a budget grid similar to this. Uh, similar to this. Well, exactly like this, not similar. Uh, you're going to see a navigation bar on the left. Yours is going to look a lot different than mine. Uh, you're going to see a funding navigation bar. It's going to get you to a funding application. And within the, the flyout window for the funding application, you're going to see a, a sections page that's going to provide for a budget. I bring you here to, to, to show you along the top. This is used for every grant. It's used by school districts. I know it's hard to see and I apologize. I'm, across the top you're going to see what we call objects. You'll see the object code. Salaries are object 100, retirement and fringe 200, purchase services, supplies, capital outlay, other. Along the left hand side you're going to see purpose codes. You may hear them called function codes for instruction, support services, governments, admin, and so on. Don't get too caught up with all the items on the left and across the top. We know that you guys, the, the non-publics, operate differently. Don't code the same as school districts. I say that because the state of Ohio, uh, Auditor of State's office created a uh, a uniform accounting system for school districts, which is called USAS. We provided a third link for budgeting. We want to try to to help you know which object to put it in. The categories along the left can everything can be a little subjective um, in 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 your world um, maybe not so much for school districts in in some federal funding but the objects across the top object 100 we've we provided a document that tells you what you would enter typically it's going to be salaries for employees that receive w-2s that's what we're looking for what kind of support documentation would we uh, expect to see we have that listed along the right hand column we expect to see your your payroll journals or maybe we you'd have a an eft for an employee um, there's something here in number c which is called time and effort there federal regulations require that if you receive federal money and somebody is is split funded in various sources they would like in various funding sources they'd like to see if you're charging 50 percent of the grant for this employee to the federal grant we need to know where your other where the time that they spent on the grant um so that's just kind of be mindful of that um in case that is is something that um, it is a requirement and and could be asked for uh, if if the grant would be reviewed retirement and fringe benefits you're going to report gross salaries again uh, in object 100 fringe retirement and fringe object 200 those are going to be any any uh, expenditures employer paid expenditures for retirement and fringe it's going to be if you if you want to charge if you are going to charge the grant and if it's allowable to the grant that the retirement that your entity pays for the employee that's what you're going to put in object two again we have some support documentation purchase services object 400 is going to be for your 1099 contract and employees so if all your employees are 1099 people you're not going to put it in salaries you're going to put it in purchase services you're going to have you may or may not you're probably not going to have a quote for an employee but you're going to have a quote we, we we might expect to see we'd expect to see a quote for um uh let's say you you purchased um the services of someone to come in and do a presentation 
uh, they submitted a quote to you. Um, I'm talking generally because you're really going to have to look at the document, the grants manual document that was also supplied to see what's allowable and fit it in the category. Uh, supplies, supplies are going to be something that, that is consumable, something that we don't expect to last for very long. Uh, you'll see under object 200, I'm not sure, 100% sure if the grant allows for computer cost or purchasing computers. Again, everything has to be within the limits of what's allowable. Uh, we have a notation here, computers costing less than 5,000. If in your organization you have a, an inventory policy, a capital outlay policy, that is different than what we have. Uh, remember, computers go in supplies, but follow your at capital outlay policy. That could be something that we that we that we would look for. Again, provided this grant allows that information, uh, allows for those expenditures. Object 600 uh, is self-explanatory. I'm not going to read through that. And again, object 800. The only other thing I want to I want to bring to your attention is the links at the top of the page. It says USAS. USAS is going to take you right to the Auditor of State's Uniform Accounting System. Why would you care about this? Um, let's just go ahead and put in object. I'm going to put search 400. Uh, you'll see along the, the, the codes on, on the left hand side, those are the purpose codes. Those kind of would tie to the purpose codes if you use state accounting. Um, uh, let me show you real quick. You saw instruction. In the world of instruction in the state accounting system, you would see that instruction would fall under a 1,000 a 1, object. I'm just sharing that with you. Um, so let's say object 400s. We're going to budget really really hone in on the objects more than the the purpose codes on the side but you'll see object 400 you're going to budget at this level if you're like i don't know if this should be a supplier purchase service you could if you'd like to refer to this manual to see what subcategories are indicated uh, in this manual, just as a reference. Uh, for example, maybe you you want to charge telephone service for that the employee that works for that grant. You want to you want to cost allocate their their phone. You're going to put it in object 400 as you look at the subcategories. If you if you have any postage that you incur, it's going to be uh, a 400. So just use this as a guide. I wanted to show you. Um, we are not, we're very flexible uh, and we will be, if you need assistance, feel free to call the Office of Grants Management and we will, or email, and we will be more than happy to walk you through that. You want to know how, that's that's to, to create the budget. So what you're going to do, and you'll see the instructions, you're going to, you're going to change the status to fiscal representative when you're doing the app. You're going to fill out the budget. You're going to change it to fiscal representative. You're going to change it to authorized representative. After the grant is after the grant application is changed to authorized representative, it's going to come directly to the Department of Education for final approval. After the grant is in the final approved status, you'll be notified. That's when you're going to be able to start sub submitting your cash request. You're going to use your cat. You're going to submit project cash requests through the CCIP. I'm not going to walk through all this. Again, we've referenced the manual, a section of the manual itself, and then we provided a quick reference tool to submit a project cash request, and we'll take you through those steps. Lastly, we have the final expenditure report. Uh, the final expenditure report is is a report that has to be done for every grant. The, the, the performance period for this grant is March 1 of 20 to December 30th of 20. Uh, March has already passed. Um, obviously, um, you, you'll want to look at the guidance document to, to understand how to apply prior expenditures. 
Uh, but the final expenditure report is, is a report that's going to be due on December 30th. Please mark your records for that and we will keep in touch with you to let you know that it is um, it is due. Uh, this is going to be the report you're going to use from the CCIP to summarize all your expenditures that you had during the performance period to say, hey, we're done. We're closing out the grant. Um, here's our here's our final expenditure report it's also going to be a report uh, due to due to the way the state accounting works it's going to take about seven to ten days for a payment to process through the system you're going to submit a project cash request it's going to come to the office of grants management we're going to review it or request additional information and or request additional information approve it within three days and then it has to work through the state accounting system you can submit multiple PCRs through the grant process, but you can't submit a second PCR until the, the previous PCR is in a state accounting paid status. So at some point we have to cut off at the towards the end of December, cut off your project cash request. And then we'll, we'll say you need to submit a final expenditure report. Um, that's typically how it works. We'll keep you posted on how it's going to work for this grant. Um, the final expenditure report, with all that said, the final expenditure report will pay out a final project cash request. So if you get to December 30th and you say, I have been so busy with all this stuff, I forgot to submit a fi my final project cash request, the final expenditure report will look at your total expenditures and the cash received, and if we owe you any money, the final expenditure report will pay out. So don't panic, um, don't panic there. Um, the last page, we just provided a quick reference checklist with all the links in one place that I shared with you earlier in the document. And that's all you have to do <laughs> to receive a payment uh, for this grant. Uh, we tried to tie it up in a nice short document, um, the shortest we could make it with some quick links. Uh, hopefully you, you find that uh, you can work through it pretty easily. Um, I'm open for any questions. Hi, Kim. I actually have a, oh, go ahead. Uh, this is Kim Palmer. Just a quick tip for some of the hyperlinks. If they are not working for you, um, try using the holding down the control key on your keyboard while clicking the link. Um, if that does not work, um, you can contact us and we can try to get you the information that should be connected to the link. And as far as the um, link that was mentioned earlier under section 1.31 to link Oaks and IRN. So that is a, a pop up for an auto reply email. If that's not working, chances are either your email system is not supported um, with that pop up. Um, so um, you can also contact us again and we'll get you the information you need for that um, link. Thank you, Kim. I think that's a really good point. What I will do is enter the information, the contact information or a screenshot of the email into the guidance document. Uh, if you click and I'll do that today, if you click on the link again and if and want to resave that, if you've saved the document on your desktop, you re-click it and I will enter that information in the in the new hyperlink document for the quick reference guide. Thank you. That was a good tip, Kim. So I would like to say thank you for recording this. This will be very helpful. And obviously when there's only 60 participants, that doesn't nearly capture all of the people who will hopefully be doing this. Um, my other question is, will the slides also be um, uploaded in with the recording as well? Because there are a few screenshots that are not in the, the document itself. Yes, yes, I will make sure they are. Uh, it was the only the only slide that that was not 
that I that I can remember and correct me if I'm wrong um, is the budget grid. OK. Thank yeah. you. And then I do have a troubleshooting question. And maybe it's something I need to just deal with separately or maybe it's something that someone on here can help with. I um, myself and the IT coordinator, we do work in a diocese office. So the IT coordinator serves as the EMIS coordinator in OED's um, powerhouse, so to speak. And we were assigning roles and I was able to assign the CCIP authorized rep role. But when I tried to assign the fiscal rep role, it would not let me do that. Is there any particular reason why? Off the top of my head, I'm not sure. Uh, I think that's specific um, to to you and we can reach out. If you want to put in the chat who who's calling, we can reach out to you after this call to try to troubleshoot. OK, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, and I, I do know that the authorized representative can only be given to one person for each entity. Okay. Correct. Yep. Correct. Yes, that is correct. Very okay. good. Thank you. Now, Kim, Kim, I have a question real quick. Um, when you say you submit your payment cash requests, now do those cash requests go to the individual vendors you put in or does it come to the to you to the school? The project cash requests are used by the school to submit expenditures right. to the department, the Department of Education to request reimbursement for. Okay, so it's, a reimbur it's a reimbursement for things we've already paid for to the vendors. Right, you can also, and Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, can they can they request advance money? Yeah, yeah, they can, so you can, um, but like let's, be, be, to, be, to keep it simple, um, so, so like what you just what you just said, you know, you've incurred the cost, and now you're paying the vendor, um, and, and then you're you're going to draw down the funds. Or if you know the invoice is coming, you have, you know an in, you know that you've got an okay. invoice coming next week, and it's for a thousand dollars. You can go ahead and put that into the system, and then and then as long as you have the invoice by the time you get it, right? Okay. All right. Yeah. There and, is. And a, go I want to add I'm one sorry, one last thing. No, no, no. This is. I want to add one last thing too. Um, two things when it comes to the cash request. Um, one, uh, it's it, um, it's it's cash basis. So the cash request and the final expenditure report are cash basis. And the second thing is um, it's cumulative. So the first your first cash request you do, you know, it's 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 uh, let's say it's a thousand dollars. You plug in a thousand dollars, and let's say the next month or the next cash request. You've incurred. You go to those. Uh, go to your accounting, your books, and it says you see. Well, not only I have, I, I had incurred a thousand dollars last month, and now this month I've uh, I, my total now is two thousand dollars because I have two months worth of expenses. You would plug in two thousand dollars. It's cumulative in the cash request because the cash request is going to compare what it. Uh, the system is going to compare what it's already paid you, like amount received, and say. OK, well, you put in two thousand dollars in expenses. We know that we've sent you a thousand, so we're going to go ahead and pay you out a thousand dollars. So it's, it's just make sure you know that it's cumulative. That's it. Now that, yeah. sound, that sounds that sounds important. So, <laughs> now, right. so, so every time you go back and add another request, let's say the actual number is cumulative. It's what you spent all the way up to this point. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, so that's, that's a great point, Brian. The um, the project cash request instructions will lead you down that path too. The reason Brian brought it up is that if you don't do that, we're going to be asking you for money back or you won't <laughs> receive <laughs> your right. check will be you'll zero be, and you'll be like, what? Right. We try to monitor that on our end, but yeah, right. that was a great tip, you'll, Brian. You, you'll be pulling your hair out because you're trying to put just a thousand dollars in, you, you know, you know you're just putting the difference in and when we're, it's looking for the cumulative. So it did. So it's you basically just running the balance like you just said. What's my balance or expenses uh, occurred? You know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. OK, well, great. Thanks, Brian. It uh -huh. is 10 o'clock. We're not going to keep you past 10. I will stay on uh, for a few minutes if anybody wants to stay on and um, ask any questions afterwards. Please reach out. We're here for you. Good luck. <laughs>
I do have a similar question about uh, requesting for funds. Okay. Uh -huh. if, if the project is, let's say, $20,000 and I have $10,000 as is my total grant, so how do I access that? Do I access show that the project is $20,000, but I'm only asking you for 10? You don't, you just need to have that support documentation. Uh, okay. At your office, if you're not charging the full 20 to the grant, um, that's okay. Just request okay. 10. Um, there is an upload feature to the piece, the project cash requests. Uh, if you want to upload that support documentation just to keep a record, uh, feel free to do that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And before, and before everybody gets off, I noticed that there's a couple, maybe all everybody is from a diocese. Would you mind? I think I responded. I'm on the CRF education. I respond. Um, we the allocations and the communications went out to whoever uh, the office uh, non-public. They gave us the contacts. So those are the people who are receiving the funds. So that's why the diocese weren't on the initial communication. If if you want us to want me to add you to like so anytime we send a communication out about this, um, that I also send you guys the communication because it sounds like you're you're involved a lot more than you know I I realized. Um, and we just don't have your act, your, your uh, emails. Would you mind sending that to us, uh, your email? And I'll make sure that when we send communications out, you, you are not surprised by a call from your school. That would be great. Thank you so okay. much. Yeah. This is Randy Bain. I'm actually the treasurer at Lakewood Lutheran School, so it's not all Catholic diocese. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's who sent me. Yeah, that's who sent me the message last night through the CRF. So, but yeah, if there's another associations, that that's fantastic that you sent it to me. I have a really a short question. The the final expenditure report. It says at the end of the grant period. Mm -hmm. Can we submit that earlier if all the money has been spent? I that believe. Would be Yes. I believe it will be open to be able to do that. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we just, we, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, you're fine. I was gonna say we actually encourage that. Um, if you if you get your project done, if you if what you plan to you've budgeted for it and you plan to spend it, and you 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 do it all. It's all finished. We actually encourage you to go ahead and get that final expense report in. If it's it, we and we'll turn it on relatively early. Um, so yeah. Okay. Thanks. What what Brian means by turn it on, oh, we sorry. have to, that's okay. We have to, internally, we have to say, okay, this grant's now going to allow for you to submit the final expenditure report. Open the window to, to, to submit it, yeah. Good morning, Bill Knoll here. Just a real quick question. I know with some state funding, they cannot directly pay a religious school. It has to go directly to the contractor. So if I understand this, if we've already allocated and purchased something within the window, you know, last month, um, we can receive that money directly to the school. Is that the way that I understand this? That's correct. Yeah. Yes. This is not. So this grant is not like, for example, Title One and CSR for equitable services. Because this grant, those, those grants are part of U.S. Department of Education. This grant actually came from the U.S. Treasury. So this will be one of the first times you, you, that um, non-publics will be receiving grant, grant and grant dollars. Um, so you can request those from us, you request funds from us, and we'll actually send you the funds. And then you, you would pay your vendor. Now, as long as, even though um, it goes back to March, you're going to want to make sure to read the guidance to make sure that the expenses were, you know, uh, meet the requirements of this grant, right? It's for the public health uh, emergency. It's um, what is it for to mitigate COVID, and it's above and beyond. Um, these expenses weren't already budgeted um, prior to what was it March 27th? I forget the magic day. Um, does that make sense? So as long as it meets those parameters, you, you will be sending you. You'd be requesting the funds from us, and we'll send you the check. That sounds great. Thank you very okay. much. You're welcome. Um, I have a question. Sure. Um, in section 1.6 of the guide, there is a link to access the CCIP. But when I click on that link, all it does is take me to a thing that says my home page, which lists my name and email address, but has no options to do anything. 
I mean, it doesn't take me to a, anything in the CCIP. It doesn't take me to Ohio ID. It just, it drops me on this thing that just, it just has my name, my email, my phone number, and then account settings, but it doesn't give me the option to do anything. Sure. I think that that's going to be a, a login troubleshoot that we need to 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 talk to you about. Um, if you want to go ahead and put your name and contact information in the chat, we can certainly reach out to you after this phone call to try to. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry to, to, to be a pain, but oh, I've no, never you're used not Google Meet before. I have no idea. I, I see no chat button anywhere on my screen. Okay. If you do, you mind giving us your name and con I, I, if you're okay with giving that uh, to it's, us, it so says chat and channel meetings only available to team members. Do you mind giving what school uh, are you? What school uh, are you uh, with? St. John Nottingham. I'm a, I'm a Lutheran school, not with the diocese. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, and what is your first name? David. Okay. I will reach out to uh, get your contact information that we have stored, David, and we will call you after this. Uh, this. How do you have my contact information stored? It should be in the Ohio Education Directory. Uh, we can the contact information for your school is in the Ohio Education Directory. Oh, if, uh, are you uh, with my this? IRN is 060384. 060384. Yeah. Okay. The, the other thing I can say is I've had that error multiple times logging into um, OHID. Sometimes you simply need to log out and log back in. Okay, great. Thank you. Yourself. Thank you. Thank you for well, that. I, much. I, I can get to the OHID, which says, you know, like, hello, my name. Um, and then it has like the, uh, you know, apps and stuff. But I, uh, how do I get to CCIP? From sure. That? Oh, OK. OK. Are you in on that screen right now? So, yeah, it says my okay. sites and applications. OK, there should be if you don't see the CCIP as a tile, the first the first four tiles are shown. Yeah, there should be a little blue arrow. Yeah, when I scroll over, I, I get nothing that says okay. CCIP. OK, great. Scroll then use the, let's use the right scroll bar and scroll down okay. and those are very those are various applications within the my Ohio realm you should be able to find ccip there um like by searching you could give that a try because uh, have... when i scroll down uh, i i still i've got nothing that says ccip anywhere on this page what what is your what is your role at the at your school I'm principal nominee. I mean, I've been trying to to get things linked, but uh, all of the uh, all of the assistance uh, mm -hmm. links go to a pop up email system, which don't work on any computer that I own. So I'm I'm like trapped. I I, I can't get any help. I can't contact it, anybody. It it might it's, be that he's not very frustrating. If he doesn't have, uh, if it's not showing up as a tile, he, it may not be recognizing him to give him access to CCIP. I'm I'm sure it, I'm sure it's not because I I, I got to be yeah. honest. With you, I've been taking notes furiously during this whole thing, but I've been bewildered since about <laughs> a minute two. Since I said good morning. So, I mean, I, I, I at this point, I literally don't have the slightest idea what's yeah. going That's on. That's a I, I'm no like first a complete idiot. Yeah, we'll, 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 no, no, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, Kim can work with you one on one. Absolutely. That's not a problem. Absolutely. Don't fret. <laughs> I have you to hop off for another call. Um, Absolutely. Uh, so I'm right. sorry. Thank you, everybody, for your time. And please do not stress. Um, we'll take, you know, we'll walk you through it. And, and, and as Kim's done a nice job, and in, 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 in this whole the whole team there, they've done a nice job, kind of putting things together. The quick links was with uh, with uh, Kim and, and uh, Yolanda and, and, and Kim Palmer. Um, they put all that together. Um, and, and really, our forte is mainly the CCAP and on um, all that other stuff. It's other offices, so we'll walk you through it. And then if there's really a technical glitch, we'll start working with the OEDS area in our section to make sure we can see what's going on as, as well. So, Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. so, all right. Well, thanks everybody. Have a great day. And I have to step off. Thanks, Brian. Okay, yeah, thanks, take care, Brian. everybody. Bye-bye. Kim, are you still taking questions? 
I sure am. Okay, this is Bill Nolan, <laughs> Somerset. Um, just a real quick question. If we've already have our DUNS, we've got our OAK ID, and I've got, obviously we've got our IRN number, then um, we can just go directly to creating a budget and then requesting our cash. Is that a, a true statement? Start the Absolutely. process? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. You'll want to, yeah, if the DUNS number's in OEDS already, you can skip that step. Put the budget in, uh, submit it to fiscal representative approved, authorized rep approved. It'll go to the department, come to the department. The department will final approve it. Once you receive notification that it's been in a final approved status, then you'll be able to start submitting your project cash requests. Through the CCIP page? Yes, yes, yes. That's, you'll, you'll do the budget, project cash requests, and final expenditure reports in the CCIP. Okay, and the budget goes in through the planning tool? The, it'll go through the funding. You'll have to go to the funding application. Okay. Uh, that, uh, if if you go to the, click on the, yeah, the, go to the section in the instructions, go to the budget section. Yeah, yep, and it'll take you to a sections page when you click on funding application. And then if you look down somewhere towards the middle, maybe you'll see a link that says budget. Okay, I've only, unfortunately, I've got fiscal year 20 and fiscal year 21, and it says all active applications. Okay. Uh, but nothing's been started. Okay, um, and if I click the on the first, application name. For the 2021 year? Yes. You're looking for an application name that starts with CRF. Um, um, okay, yes. Uh, entitlement funding application. So yep. you click yes. on that yep. and start yes. it. Yeah, then you, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay, I'll stay on till 1015 and then we will, I will post this presentation as soon as I receive notification that the recording is ready in the chat for this session. You can always go back into Teams if you, if you come into Teams and click on the, the meeting uh, to open it up and you'll find the the recording in the chat. I'll also troubleshoot with people that are smarter than me to see if this link can be shared somewhere else outside of Teams. I have a quick question. Sure. I'm um, Tina Burkhart from Central Christian School. Hi, Tina. Um, hi, and I, I came in a few minutes late, so I apologize if this That's was addressed. Okay. Um, if using for payroll, Will we be submitting each individual payroll or just waiting until we've used the entire amount and submitting it once? That will be your choice. Uh, okay. If you get, if you have payroll every two weeks and would like to submit a cash request every two weeks, you can. The only the only caution with project cash request, you can submit as many as you want. It takes about seven to 10 days for the entire process, and you cannot submit another cash request until the first one has been completely paid through the state accounting system. So it'd be best just to wait until the end. That's certainly up to you. Uh, we okay. have we have all sorts of entities, um, and that is is not something that that we we regulate or mandate uh, the only the, again the only stipulation is that you cannot you will not be able to submit a second PCR until the first one is paid and that process takes about seven to ten days. Thank you very much. I appreciate you're, it. You're welcome. Okay, we got about another minute. Hi, this is Allison with the Diocese of Columbus Catholic Schools. Hi, Allison. Um, I have, hi. I have a quick question. I don't know if, you, if you're going to be able to help me with this. Um, we've had some questions on where to upload assurances in the CCIP. Sure. Do you know where that um, is for our principals? Yes. Uh, 
we, we talked about going to the funding application. Mm -hmm. uh, once you log in, you click on that, you get to the sections page underneath the budget uh, along that uh, on that sections page in the funding application. There's an upload feature, okay. uh, upload documents, uh, upload and view. I believe it says if you click on that link, it'll give you the opportunity to be able to upload into the CCIP. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. Good question. OK, well, if we have no other questions, we will conclude the presentation and I want to thank you all for all your time. Uh, feel free at any time to reach out to the department and we will be more than happy to to help you through the process. Have a great day. Thanks, Kim. You're welcome. Thanks, Kim. You're welcome. <laughs>